This is Patriots Draft Countdown, presented by Bud Light. Welcome to the NFL Draft. Hosted by the writers of Patriots.com. From now until you hear the New England Patriots like the countdown is on. Welcome to the Patriots Draft Countdown, presented by Bud Light. All right, welcome everybody. We're back with another edition of the Patriots Draft Countdown presented by Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the New England Patriots. Guys, today we have the quarterback segment, which is what everybody's been waiting for, obviously. But before we get into that, we're going to go over some latest news. We got Chris Cassidy, Evan Lazar, doing? Paul Perillo. And guys, I think the news okay. of the weekend is Michael Penix. It's supposed to show up, right? Is that is it yeah, today? Today, yeah, I think conference. dinner tonight, and then or dinner last night, visit today, which is what they've been doing with all the quarterbacks. So uh, the first time that they've shown real interest in Michael Penix, they did meet with him at the Senior Bowl, but they meet with pretty much everybody that plays in the Senior Bowl uh, down in Mobile. So uh, this is the first time that I think Elliot Wolf and Gerard Mayo are going to have a legitimate time to get to know Michael Penix a little bit and uh, obviously the medicals are going to be big with him for every yeah. team uh, so getting him here uh, getting probably a physical exam by your doctors and your facility uh, all those things play a big factor uh, we can obviously talk about different scenarios of how they end up with Michael Penix but I think the overall takeaway for me is just no stone unturned you know this is a guy that deserves a seat at the table and this and a spot in the conversation and I think it would have been a little bit disappointing if they went the whole process and essentially just ignored Michael Penix even if it ends up being Drake May or Jaden or JJ McCarthy at three I, I still like the idea of at least getting to know some of these guys agreed Paul you got anything on this no well that's four of, of the quarterbacks though now that that they used uh, official 30 visits on so I, I agree with Evan I think it's, it's one of those deals if something out of outside the box comes up um come the april 25th and i don't know maybe washington takes drake may and that and drake may was the one you know something happens uh, you know along those terms and somebody comes after you you know with a really overly aggressive uh bag you know as mayo said <laughs> now you have to have some some fallback you have to have some intel on the guy who you might have to get, uh, you know, early in the second round, or do you want to trade up out of the early second round into the late first round? And Michael Penix would be probably the best candidate for that. Agreed, Chris. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to just chime in there. I mean, I think the Patriots are right now are just testing the waters. I think it's you got to be able to see all these guys, um, especially in any scenario where, again, if there is a trade back situation where the Patriots do fall back and end up with a quarterback in the second round, like you have to, you have to look at these guys. It's important to look at these guys and see what you're going to get from them, how they're going to be personality wise and obviously health wise. So it's all important. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt that off of the film, Michael Penix is probably QB four in this draft. Mm -hmm. I, I think his draft year film is better than what JJ McCarthy did at Michigan last year. And it, if it wasn't for the medical situation, uh, who knows how high he could go in this draft. Uh, you know, he's a little bit older of a prospect. It did take him a while in college with all the injuries, but uh, there's not a very, uh, you know, very few guys in this draft, I would say, with the pinpoint downfield accuracy, you know, in terms of the uh, the downfield ball placement on the deep ball uh, is exceptional uh, on film with Penix. So uh, I, I still think that he as much as I feel like there, a lot of people have cooled on him, I, I feel like in some ways uh, from since, you know, the season and the Michigan game, obviously in the college football playoff, I think is a big reason why after the Texas game, this guy was like, everybody's oh, darling, God. right? Yeah, like everybody no was all, <laughs> all over the place, you know, uh, talking about Michael Penix. So uh, I definitely uh, think that he's someone that, that can go early in this draft. Like if he's, if there's a second tier, then, you know, air quotes for that, he's probably the top guy, I yeah. think. So, you know, that's a good fallback. But as I said, guys, this episode is mostly on quarterbacks. So we're going to get way more into this. We got JJ McCarthy talk, Jaden Daniels, and of course, Drake May. So we hope you enjoy this episode and uh, we'll talk to you later. All right, we're here with our final positional preview here in 2024 Patriots draft countdown. And guys, it's the quarterback position. It's a huge one for the Patriots. It's really kind of what we've been talking about all spring. I don't know if it was good to save this one to the end because I feel like we're talked out on this already. <laughs> um, but let's just give a nice broad overview. And Paul, I want to start with you and, and Caleb Williams, who, you know, exciting, dynamic player. And, and it seems like a lock he's going to go to Chicago. Yeah, the first time we had this show on, uh, I don't know, November 13th or so, <laughs> um, yeah, I felt like there was a clear separation between Williams and the rest. Yeah. Um, and it's 
certainly seems like it stayed that way. Um, you know, in the media, I think it kind of fluctuates with the off-field stuff and the crying and, you know, other factors there. But I just feel like his ability off-platform um, to make some plays, is he's very accurate, obviously dynamic running as well. He's a little small, uh, you know, at 6'1"-ish, and he's definitely loose with the football. So he's, there's no such thing as a perfect prospect any year, but – this year, no one's talking about Caleb Williams as sort of that special generational kind of talent. I don't think he is, but I think he's clearly QB one, as Evan and the kids yeah. say. Do you think Evan? Do you think he could be that guy though, if he kind of irons out some of those details? I would say that uh, his his arm talent's generational. I don't know. I agree with Paul that he's got warts to his game that he's going to have to work out with ball security and taking too many sacks and things like that. But uh, his arm talent's generational. Uh, he, you know, he's got that ability, like Paul is saying, off platform to not just throw the ball down the field, you know, ten yards. He can throw it sixty yards inaccurately off platform. Yeah. You know, he makes some throws on film that are just disgusting. Like you're just like, come on, Re- like really, like what are you supposed to do about that? So uh, he's incredibly, incredibly talented. Talented. I know that his personality is not for everybody. We're going to leave that out to the <laughs> side. Uh, his football ability is, you know, his ability on film is is exceptional. And I've I've wire to wire. I have had him one one. I've had him in his own tier. Like he's he's a tier above everybody else in this class to me. Is he in the Andrew Luck sphere? Probably not. But he's right below that sphere. I would say that maybe we all should have thought of Trevor Lawrence like a little bit less. <laughs> of that generational type, and I think that Caleb's in a similar category. All right, Witsis, I'm not gonna. We we've covered. I feel like we've covered Caleb. <laughs> we don't need to belabor the point. Um, so let's just get right to Drake May. I mean, I think all of us are would be very excited if the Patriots were able to land him. Um, you know, just prototypical size. He's got some athleticism. He's got some of the off-platform stuff. He's got some creativity to his game. He's just kind of erratic at times, but he's still just 21 years old, but it seems like he's got all the tools in the shed. Yeah, I mean, he he carried a bad UNC team um, last year, not this past season, year before. I mean, it really was Drake May and Caleb Williams, and even there were some scenarios where Drake May was going to be the number one guy. So that's a guy you can come in. He's young. If you know the offense, say the Patriots, if we're lucky enough to get him at three, we're not ready for him. You can sit him. He'll just grow behind Jacoby Brissett. We don't know what's going to happen, but at this point, I just hope the commanders don't take him. Yeah. So, <laughs> right, that's all of us. But you guys, I mean, this is this is the guy we should probably spend the most time on, right, Paul? I mean, he, yeah, he's I a like good him and Daniels. Uh, Daniels a little bit more than than you do, but May is, is would be my pick as well. I just I think that there's a lot of athleticism there. You know, prototypical size, six four, two twenty five or so. Um, I think he can run. He's he's been an effective runner. There's inconsistencies. There's no again. There's no perfect guys. He uh, loses his accuracy at times. The mechanics are an issue. I think those things are coachable. Uh, I think he has the things that you can't teach in terms of the physical tools. I, I, I mean, I think there's a lot to like there. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. I think the biggest thing is with with Drake May is that this this mold, this archetype, is working out more and more in the league now that – they are these private quarterback coaches in the off season, and there's a little bit more knowledge of how to what's important and what's not when it comes to footwork and things like that. You see so many of these guys now, and I, I think that Drake May is right in the mold of Allen, Herbert, Jordan Love, like all those types of players. That it'll it'll work itself out more times than not now. You know, maybe 20 years ago we had trouble with these kinds of players. Now it feels like the developmental track is a lot easier for them. You look at the high end throws, like the big time throws down the field. Nobody's made more of them in college football over the last two years than Drake May. So you see those big time throws, those high level franchise QB plays. Uh, he has those, just to Paul's point. He has to be more consistent with the layups. It's actually the easy throws that he has harder trouble with than the big time throws. So that's a little bit backwards, but in a lot of ways, it, I just kind of describe Josh Allen, you know, coming out of college. So that's the way that I look at it with Drake May is that we've we've gotten better of developing that kind of talent in the league, and I, I think it will, it has panned out more times than not recently. Yeah, we talk about I mean, it's a good transition, though, to Jaden Daniels, who, you know, similar. I mean, has to kind of develop probably more along the lines of a Lamar Jackson. You know, Paul, you mentioned that, you know, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit more concerned. I, there are a few just traits in him that I see that I see coming, and, and if they don't develop, you know, I, I, I'd be kind of mad at myself, but, um, you know, why don't you set up Jaden Daniels a little bit? Yeah, I just think that the – 
the ability to run is the X factor there. And th- these guys are all mobile. And Caleb, Caleb Williams is a terrific runner, too. I'm not saying that Daniels is the only guy, but I do think that he separates himself a little bit yeah. as a runner. And I think sometimes that can make up for some of the in- inefficiencies. He's like everybody else, though. He's going to have to learn how to do it from the pocket and you know get the ball out on time and be in rhythm, make his progressions. I think for a lot of these guys, there was a lot of one-read stuff. Evan would probably speak to that a little bit more than I would. Um, but I, I, there's a lot to like about Daniels. And, and you know I think the fact that the, the size of the frame, you know it's not that much different than Lamar Jackson. It's a little smaller. So I, I think some people felt like the durability would be an issue. I was one of them. You know, it looks like he's, you know, if he can play at 210 or, you know, 215, I think that's big enough. Uh, I, I, there's a lot to like there. Yeah, I think he's very different stylistically than Lamar. He runs differently, tacks different areas of the field as a thrower. But the way that defenses have to account for his mobility is very similar to Lamar. So you're going to get into a game plan defensively against the Patriots, and you are going to have to have a – coordinated rush plan of how are we going to contain Jaden Daniels in the pocket? Cause when he gets out of the pocket and runs, uh, he's a 50 yard touchdown waiting to happen. I mean, he will turn on the tape against Florida or Alabama and he is just taking off running for huge chunks, not just 10 yards at a time, 50, 60, 70, 85 yard touchdown against Florida running the football. So that's a difference making trait that he has as a passer though. There are has some hesitations with his profile. Uh, he has a lot of overlap as a thrower with Justin Fields and with Jalen hurts. So that's the scale that I have put him on. Jalen hurts is like, well, I think what it could be if everything around him is in the right order. And I think with him, it's really about having those outside receivers that can win one-on-one because he's not somebody that likes to throw the ball to the middle of the field. He's not going to hit the layered anticipatory rhythm throws between the numbers. That's not his game. That's where the Justin Fields thing kind of comes in. There's a lot of sacks on film. There's a lot of, you know, when he gets pressure, he's going to get sacked. He's not elusive overly in the pocket and he, and he's not big. So when you hit him, he's going to go down. So those are the things that I think give you concern about Jaden Daniels is just that we look at what just happened with Justin Fields in Chicago. If you don't give him a good offensive line and he really, you know, DJ Moore is like the best receiver he's ever worked with. then it's going to be a little bit of a projection of what he can do as a thrower. But I think he's a much better natural runner than, than Justin Fields is. So I put him more in the Lamar category in that, in that group. What, no, what, do you, what do you think, Tish? You got Daniels, or are you, should we move on to, to McCarthy? Well, what I want to <laughs> add about Daniels real quick is that the difference between him and Lamar is Lamar was a bit better at avoiding the hits. I mean, there's some footage of Jaden Daniels getting absolutely planted, and I'm also worried that he had to wait to get, as Evan said, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas. I just don't know if that would be a great fit for the Pats. Once again, it's something we haven't had before because Cam kind of didn't have the arm when he was here. Yeah, yeah Lamar, Lamar is more creative as a runner too. Like yeah. Lamar is more elusive mm-hmm. and, and uh, more jitterbuggy as yeah. a runner. Jaden Daniels is a shot out of a cannon type of runner. Like when he sees a gap, he's going to just explode through it. You know, if you want to compare him as a runner, I see a lot of Kaepernick in how he runs the ball. That's it's the straight line speed. It's not, he's not a dancer like Lamar is, you know, Lamar's got it all. I, I think that that still can be really valuable, but it's just a little bit of a different running style. All right. So let's move now to, uh, you know, probably the most polarizing prospect, JJ For McCarthy, <laughs> who wasn't really even, I mean, I don't feel like he was even polarizing, like to start the process. And then just in the last like month or so, Paul, he's really become the guy that, you know, just everyone has him going all the way up to three of the Patriots. Yeah. I mean, does that sound crazy? We're a couple of weeks out now, and it certainly seems like I'd be surprised at this point with the amount of buzz that he's gotten if he doesn't go in the top ten. So I, I'm not necessarily sure how this all happened, um, but there is a skill set there that I think is a little underrated. He is polarizing. You're right, Mike, but I do think he has a, a good degree of athleticism in mobility. He's not the runner per se that the other guys are, but he can move. Yep. And he's got a terrific arm. Matter of fact, some people criticize that it's all fastballs, like he needs to sort of vary the routine a little bit. Um, but there's the, the, to me, it's the the, uh, the cliched question. He never had to carry the team at Michigan, so that's a projection. You don't know if he can do it. Yeah. What do you think, Ev? Yeah, I, I mean, I've been pretty critical of, of the McCarthy stuff. I think his floor is probably the Minnesota at 11, like if they just – wait it out and do the Mac Jones thing where you just hope Mm. he falls in your lap at 11, uh, then maybe, you know, that ends up happening there. I think the biggest thing with McCarthy is that I, 
the, the strengths there are that he plays within structure of a pro style offense at Michigan. So that's nice and easily translatable to the NFL. Like when he's on time and he's on the first read, this is what he's capable of doing. We can see, we can see that on film, even in a small sample size. He's also to Paul's point, he's very, very quick and agile in the pocket. He's nimble. He can move around the pocket. He can evade rushers. Uh, he can keep his eyes downfield and throw off of that. He's not a scrambler, uh, but he's a thrower within that confine. So he's very good there. He, he put down a 6.823 cone. So like you can see the quickness. Like He's got that change of direction ability. I think the biggest thing with him is just a lack of creativity. You know, He's an in-structured player. And there's just not a whole lot of times in structure that I see him really using some of the different quarterback tools to hit bigger plays down the field. Like, let's come off. Yeah, the first read might be an open six-yard completion. But if I come off the first read, the second read's an 80-yard touchdown. You see him stick onto the first read a little bit too often. There's not a lot of pump fakes or manipulation or real creativity or playmaking to his game. So that's why I've really consistently compared him to Purdy because I feel like Brock Purdy is one of those guys that yeah if it's all on time and if the guys are getting open and the scheme is working and all this kind of stuff he can be a prolific you know he's what runner up for MVP last year really efficient guy but is he going to be the reason that you look back and say JJ McCarthy carried us that day like he was the reason why we won this game I, I don't I don't see that in the league and I think that that's if you're picking at three your guy has to have that type of potential. He has yeah. to be able to do that. Yeah. I just don't think he's the dynamic player worth the number three pick. You don't yeah. you don't go four and thirteen to take Bo Nix. You don't go four and thirteen to take JJ McCarthy. It's just it's not the right move. If you're at eleven, it makes more sense. That's the kind of a player you hope falls in your lap. I just don't think he's worth that high a pick. So let's round out just the the big names to talk the group. Michael Panics last you know, last one obviously had really nice game in the semifinals. Injury history, big arm down the field, Paul. I mean, he's certainly got some traits, yeah. but he's a guy that seems kind of like he's fallen off a little bit it, with the hype train. He's been quiet, lately. yeah, and the Patriots really haven't expressed much interest or haven't had much uh, of their interest publicized, uh, at least mm -hmm. around him. So, uh, But, yeah, terrific passer, I think, maybe uh, arguably the best passer in, in the draft. But uh, you do not get the dynamic elements that most of these other guys give you. Yeah. yeah, other than May, he's probably the most pinpoint accurate on the deep ball. You know, yeah. him and May are kind of in that category, and Caleb obviously too, but I don't really count him because he's going <laughs> to the Bears. So, you know, it, between the guys that are going to be Patriots potentially, I would say Penix is downfield throws and just those absolutely perfect placed passes like the Penix has that uh, the, the issues with Penix other than the injuries of course which you have to mention uh, is under pressure uh, his accuracy and and his uh, velocity on the football dips w when he's got pressure in his face he's got people at his feet things like that we saw that in the in the national championship game but it, it comes up in other pockets when he was under pressure during the season against better teams you know, like an Oregon or something like that so uh, that does happen with him um, but uh, if you put the injuries to the side and you're a team that clears him medically and feel good about him medically, which some teams I think do, uh, then you can convince yourself that he's got that leadership, that it thing that we were talking about with McCarthy a little bit. Uh, he's got good downfield accuracy for the most part. Um, so, you know, you could talk yourself into Michael Penix, but based off of what they've done pre-draft, I just think it's risky uh, to take Penix without, doing real homework on him and maybe it's all been private and maybe it's right. all been the behind closed doors but to not have him here for a 30 visit to not go to his pro day with the big decision makers and all this kind of stuff it's i would i would be a little bit yeah. scared he's off by the that. big board yeah he might be. <laughs> it, it's interesting you can't ignore the injuries but i think the year before he had about 31 32 touchdowns falls up with 36 kind of crazy to think what one game can do we had the mantra game against texas doesn't play as well in the final so it'd kind of be interesting to see where he'd be at if that texas game was the final game but yeah. it is risky but he's one of those players if you hit it could be good news for the franchise so so it seems like i mean some more than others but this hopefully the patriots one of these guys is on the patriots like hopefully one of those top six but as we get down here and i know evan you said before like i mean it's just not a great class after that kind of top six and it's just who kind of intrigues you a little bit 
Um, I just throw out two names that I kind of like. I mean, Joe Milton. I don't even know if I like him. I'm just like I just like watching him chuck the deep Can't ball, the you arm. know, walk away and just put the finger up. Might be the um, best time I've ever. Yeah, seen. Yeah, I mean, it's it's and fun to watch, and I, and I look at that as you know, it's a late round guy where hey, I'm always a fan of drafting quarterbacks, but you know, giving him a chance like just to come into training camp and watch him is like you know, almost like JJ Taylor was. Where I'm like, oh, he'll be fun in training camp. He's never going to play a down, a meaningful down for the team, but at least it'll make kind of could make some fun preseason games. You yeah, know, right. I think Milton would be interesting in a year like the Kenny Pickett year. Where there's not really that consensus, one guy. It'd be interesting what team takes a reach on him. He's there. got. I mean, he's got traits. The the other one I, I just you know throw out Jordan Travis from Florida State, who I know you know really undersized, coming off a big injury. But I just wonder. You know, I just think there's something there. I just like him. I like listening to him at the combine. Um, you know, but again, like this is like we're talking a day three developmental guy. Um, I don't know, Paul. You got any comments on those guys, or if there's other guys that you know? Those just two maybe guys are, are also both um, a little older. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and had longer career. I think they both were in college for six years. Um, yeah, Travis is almost uh, 24 years yeah, old. Milton you know, is so over So he 24. had some time at Louisville before Florida State, yeah. and Milton obviously at Michigan before Tennessee. Um, I, I I don't I, I like Travis more. I, Milton has gotten opportunities to play yeah. and not been overly productive. Travis was very productive. Um, yeah. He was in very much in the Heisman Trophy running with Daniels this year um, before he got, got suffered that injury. But the size worries me. To me, if you're looking down here and you're going to roll the dice, it's Rattler. It's Spencer Rattler, who I don't love, but the ability, I think the, the, the tools it combined with the production in college, I think are at a higher level. If you're going to roll the dice on a, on a mid Mid round pick, I think he'd be the guy. Yeah, yeah Joe Milton's not good at football. <laughs> he just <laughs> like, throw it. Or you could, or, or you could yeah, say, yeah, like Joe perfect. Joe yeah. Milton is. If it's a pro day, if it's a combine, <laughs> he's going to be the star of the show. When you actually watch him play football, yeah. he's not good. Yeah. You know, it's it, also a system <laughs> that no one has really thrived in. Yeah, you know, that Josh Heupel system. Yeah, in the NFL, it's a yeah. good college system. It's just that's what it is. He's got a cannon of an arm. He's got size he's got athleticism you know in a lot of ways like it, there's guys like that you know anthony richardson right but anthony richardson's got natural quarterback mm-hmm. instincts and ability to play the game uh joe milton is not like that i think that you know we did i don't know if we mentioned bo nix you know bo nix is probably we skipped over bo nix the, the, the early day reason. two yeah. guy <laughs> uh you know i've called him vanilla ice cream in the past like he's one of those guys with bo nix though that is accurate and on time and he's gonna hit the short game and he's gonna do hit the layups in the offense he's not going to do anything else like it's not going to be yeah. it's not going to be explosive it's not going to be fun it's not going to be creative uh but if you're just looking for a distributor a point guard at the position and bo Nix has some ability to do that i've heard you know alex smith you know best case scenario maybe like a baker mayfield you know like those types of comps for him uh, he is a little bit more athletic than like a mac jones like he can run around a little bit more um so he's got some skill uh spencer rattler i think has two things going for him he's got a huge arm he's got natural arm talent can flick it from any platform uh he's really uh got a good arm and he's got a decent feel for navigating pressure in the pocket you know he's got some of that bob and weave to him in the pocket uh, but he holds the ball a lot it doesn't see the field particularly great and he relies uh, on his skills a lot yeah he has a lot of skill but he sometimes relies a little too much on him yeah and he's a shade over six feet tall yeah so he's not the biggest guy either i think great comp for him is Gardner Minshew mm-hmm. you know like I you can see that there is ability there but is he ever going to be the guy that is your guy like this is our franchise quarterback probably not but I think he's going to kick around the league for like a decade as like a high-end yeah. backup type of player so that's value tease any other guys these these late no, round guys that kind of Rattler you was my other guy yeah. Rattler Penix and Penix is probably gonna go higher than Rattler or hopefully he does but other than that Drake May, baby. <laughs> yeah all right anybody have any, anybody we miss anyone There's else one guy that I think on? Evan yeah. is a little high on the, the Bradley. Yeah, Bradley yeah, yeah Bradley, Bradley from Southern Alabama. I or South Alabama. I don't know which one it is. Carter Bradley. I, South I, Alabama. He's got. He's athletic. You know, he's a good athlete. He can run around a little bit. Um, you know, between him and Michael Pratt, one of those guys is going to stick in the league as the same kind of category as Spencer Rattler, like a high end backup, low end starter, spot starter, that type of player. Uh, Bradley probably available a little bit later than Pratt. Pratt has a chance, I think, to be like a top one fifty pick. You know, he'd probably go by the end of the fourth round. I, I like Pratt I in day three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's not what you think he is Pratt. Like you think that you're turning on a tape of like a guy that's just doesn't have the physical tools, but has the timing and the rhythm down. He's actually the opposite. Like he's actually pretty toolsy for a guy that went to that level of school. Um, but he's, uh, he's just not, 
in the category of some of these other guys in terms of physical ability and he's you know the timing is not always great either so there, there's some developmental stuff that needs to be done there but he's bigger and stronger and faster than you would think for for where he went to school i just wanted to bring those guys up for those of you looking for the double dip yeah. you know they're going to get somebody in the first round and oh it's the fifth round you know let's let's do the Kurt cousins rg3, RG3 thing yeah. Pratt could be a you know a good pick for that. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. Evans guy Bradley 100%. could be a good pick for that. Yeah, I think Pratt is the guy for that, not just because he kind of looks like Kirk Cousins, <laughs> uh, but also <laughs> just like that? Uh, because I think that Rattler, Nix, Penix, like those guys are going to be top 100 picks. So if you're really looking for the double dip, you're thinking fourth or fifth round at the earliest is right. when you're going to take the other quarterback. All right. Well, that's going to do it here for our all of our positional previews, certainly quarterback, an important one. Hopefully the Patriots are able to nab one of those top prospects. So just over a week to go, folks. We're getting close. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. That wraps up all of our positional prospect review previews. Um, guys, the last show is going to be a live show, April 24th, the night before the draft, and we'll be live from 12 to 1 p.m. We're all going to be here to go over everything. We might do a little live mock draft, but we don't want to tease too much here. But thanks for tuning in.